What's up? What's good? Welcome into the show. This is Philadelphia Eagles. Now I'm Chase Senior, and coming up, we're going to dive into this fascinating discussion. Should the Eagles bring back Ed Drusher Hassan Reddick, given their issues at the Ed Drusher spot in trying to generate pressure on the quarterback? And with that, we naturally segue to this. This is today's poll question. It'll be today's pin comment. Do the Eagles need to upgrade at edge rusher? Type Y for yes or type N for no. As for the latest on Hassan Reddick, who grew up in Camden, New Jersey, he played his college football at Temple University under Matt Rule while I was there at TU calling Temple games and had a great two-year stretch with Philadelphia. 16 sacks his first year, 11 sacks his second year. He gets traded to the Jets for a third-round pick, which can become a second, yet he's nowhere to be found for New York. He is the only player in the NFL still holding out, and he skipped the Jets' season opener against the San Francisco 49ers this past Monday. And the Jets' pass rush against that Niners team certainly missed him, and New York could certainly use him. They do have a talented front. They don't have a lot of depth, especially at that edge rusher spot. He was their biggest free agent acquisition, and they haven't found a way to pay him the contract or the money that he wants. And because of that, Redick has said, you know what, I'm good. I'll just stay home until I get the deal that I want. Now, why is his son Redick holding out? In 2022, the Eagles signed him to a bargain deal. And I said that at the time when I first took over Eagles. Now, it was a three-year contract worth $45 million. But the final year of Reddick's deal, which is this year here in 2024, is non-guaranteed, 14 and a quarter. He is now tied for 19th in average annual value among edge rushers. Now, you can look at this conversation in a couple of ways. If Hassan Reddick is looking for top five edge rusher money, I wouldn't pay him $20, $25 million because I don't think that he's in that class with TJ Watt, Nick Bosa, Max Crosby, and those types of players. If all he wants is that money guaranteed, what are the New York Jets doing? You already gave up a third, which can become a second. This has become a messy situation for you. You couldn't get after Brock Purdy after the first couple of drives of the game on Monday Night Football, and then San Francisco played bully ball, and they ran it right down your throats. you got to find a way, as you're looking to end this playoff drought, to make Reddick happy. And if you're going to trade for him and you know he wants a new deal, you still pull the trigger, and then you don't pay him? What a dumb strategy for a dumb organization. As for the Reddick timeline, he got traded by Howie Roseman on March 29th. And whereas the Jets have gone about this in a dumb way, Howie Roseman played his cards beautifully. There was pressure on him to trade Reddick. He kept waiting and waiting and waiting. And then he was able to maximize value. And then he was able to sign Bryce Huff away from the Jets. On April 1st, Hassan Reddick showed up for his introductory press conference with New York and has not been with the team since. Not during OTAs, not during mandatory minicamp, not during training camp or the preseason, and he skipped the first game of the year. And here's what Jeremy Fowler of ESPN had to report on the Reddick front. Their options appear clear. You keep him on the reserve list until he reports, or you attempt to trade him closer to the deadline. The latter, meaning the Jets trading him, is looking more likely according to multiple league executives. Now, Joe Douglas, who is the Jets general manager, used to be the right-hand man, to Howie Roseman in the Eagles front office, I like his talent evaluation. He was with the Baltimore Ravens before Philadelphia, and I thought that was a good hire by New York. And sometimes when it comes down to paying players, it can be the owner's decision. But just what an unmitigated disaster for the Jets who can never seem to get out of their own way. Furthermore, here's what an NFC executive had to say about Hassan Reddick. Not sure the Jets have a choice. They wouldn't get similar value back, a third rounder, but it would be hard for the Jets to pay him at this point, and he clearly doesn't want to be there. Both sides badly mismanaged the situation. Which brings us to the topic at hand for today's show. If Hassan Reddick is available for a trade and the Eagles need pass rushing help, should Howie Roseman go thug life, 
Should he go savage mode? And should he do the funniest thing ever in reacquiring Howie Roseman? Because we know that Howie is very aggressive. We know that Howie can be a savage. And should he try to bring him back? We're going to talk about that coming up just around the corner. But first, let's mention today's sponsor. That is game time. What time is it? Game time. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the app. Create an account. Use the code chat sports for $20 off your first purchase. That's the code chat sports. C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S. Terms apply. First purchase only for $20 off. If you're looking for the best seats at the lowest price guaranteed, Game Time has you covered. This is not just an app so that you can go to sporting events. You can also additionally go to concerts, comedy shows, theater events, and more. You can see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive, and you can access tickets right from your phone. If you want to, you can easily resell tickets. If you've never been to an Eagles game, you have to go. Spend hours in the lead-up to kickoff, tailgating, go to the game and be a part of a raucous and lively atmosphere. And during the game, you can sing the Fly Eagles Fly theme song with nearly 70,000 Eagles fans. And I have good news for everybody. Still plenty of tickets available for Falcons Eagles on Monday Night Football. If you want to get your tickets now, you can do that. You see the view from your seat right here. Or if you want to look down at Lincoln Financial Field from the bird's eye view, you can pick which yard line you want to sit at. You want to go to a Philadelphia Phillies game. They've been hot over the last couple of weeks. Best atmosphere in Major League Baseball. You can do that as well. So one more time, download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your purchase terms apply. And that is for the first purchase only. So now we segue to this. Should the Eagles actually entertain bringing back Hassan Reddick? This has been a highly productive player as an edge rusher. This is partially a problem for Philadelphia at the edge rusher spot because Bryce Huff, who the Eagles gave $34 million in guaranteed money to, is MIA. He's in the witness protection program. What is going on with Bryce Huff? Vic Fangio said on Wednesday that in order for him to play, he needs to separate himself from the other guys. That's not good when you paid so much financial capital for this player who's coming off a career-high 10 sacks last year with the New York Jets. He was fourth at his position in snaps played at less than 50% against Green Bay in Week 1. Eagles giving him all that guaranteed money, and there were certainly red flags in the preseason where he had to play a lot, and Vic Fangio never seemed to be fully bought in on Bryce Up. To me, it looks like this is a Howie Roseman signing, but Vic Fangio was kind of iffy on whether or not he would be a scheme fit. And against the Packers, we saw nothing. No sacks, no pressures, no hurries, and Ed Drusher was a little bit of a concern for me going into this year. It's become a greater concern. Now, hopefully... It was a byproduct of that grass surface in Brazil being terrible and the Eagles pass rush can get going. But if they can, I know the secondary is revamped. I know the secondary is improved, but it's going to make that secondary job on the back end a lot harder if there's not that pass rush, which can get after the quarterback and move the quarterback off the spot in this pass happy era. And you look at the Eagles snap counts against Green Bay, Josh Sweat leading edge rushers. He played 41 snaps. That was 61% of the ball game. I thought Brandon Graham played a really good game, even at his age, 15th and final season for him. 32 snaps for BG, good against the run, able to collapse, collapse the pocket on a couple of occasions. That accounted for 48% of the defensive snaps for Philadelphia. Nolan Smith logged 31 snaps. That's good for his development. That was at 46%. And Bryce Huff, who last year played less than 50% of the snaps for New York, logged 45% of the snaps against Green Bay with only 30. So maybe it's not a trade now. And I don't think it's going to be a trade now. But you think back to that Jeremy Fowler report, which we just mentioned. He said maybe the Jets trade him closer to the deadline. Could Philadelphia reevaluate the edge rusher spot Keep an eye on that position over the next few weeks. They have a very early bye week in week five, and then later maybe elect to pull the trigger on bringing Reddick back. Because if Huff continues to be MIA, this deal could make a lot of sense. What is also an issue 
with bringing back Hassan Redick as the next portion of this conversation, though, is that Fangio will ask edge rushers to drop back in coverage. And I think that Fangio, Redick, they had a conversation when Fangio first got hired, and Fangio let Redick know his expectations and what his role could be. And Redick was like, I'm not really a fan of dropping back in coverage. It's not my strength. I want to get after the quarterback. I want to sack the quarterback. And over the last four years, I've been one of the most productive edge rushers in the game. How about this list right here? Most sacks in the National Football League the last four years. T.J. Watt at number one, 48 sacks. Miles Garrett right behind him, 47. Nick Bosa, 44 and a half. Micah Parsons at 41 and a half. Trey Hendrickson at 39 and a half. So Hassan Reddick is sixth for the most sacks over the last four years. That is elite territory and elite company to be in. He's ahead of Chris Jones, who of course plays defensive tackle. He's ahead of Max Crosby, Daniel Hunter, and Khalil Mack. So there's an argument to be made for Reddick to get paid more. How much does he want to get paid? Does he just want that final year guaranteed? I imagine he wants the money guaranteed, and then he wants a contract extension as he's entering and on an expiring deal. For Philadelphia, though, we know what he's capable of bringing to the table, and the Eagles have to do a better job of getting after the quarterback. That was a concern in the preseason. It was a concern week one, and that's what Reddick flourishes with. That role of having that speed, bend, twitch coming off the edge to put pressure on the opposing signal caller. So we round out with this. Should the Eagles bring back Hassan Reddick? R for reunion. NYJ for you think he's going to stay with the New York Jets. Chime in. Let me know.